was reading that you're really into permaculture. Was that just about the potatoes, or or do you do everything, uh, you know, without having to till the garden? Everything. I um, back in. Uh, I bought this house in 2011. We had another house. I moved from a different part of the province. I had a garden, you know, a sizable garden in my old house. Um, when I bought this house, I had a bigger property, so a, you know, garden always gets bigger every single year. <laughs> And there was one winter where I was just like looking for stuff to watch on YouTube. And I just came across this, this uh, video of a guy talking about permaculture. And then I, mm -hmm. it, that guy was compelling the argument he made, right? He said, look at the forest. It grows. No one waters it. No one fertilizes yeah. it. No one tells it. Um, everything's happening just fine there. And uh, <laughs> there, there are ways you can copy the way that works in a garden and you can have a very low maintenance garden and high productivity garden. Um, just copying the way a, a natural system works, yeah. uh, you know, and I, I was compelled by that. So I just started reading uh, literature on that. So I, I read all the, the master works, Sepp Holzer, um, what's his name, Dave Holmgren and um, the actual book. I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of like the, the, yeah. the most recognizable name in permaculture <laughs> who wrote permaculture one. Bill Mollison, and Dave, <laughs> Bill Mollison, Dave Holmgren wrote Permaculture One. I read uh, Ruth Stout, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of folk. Have you heard of this Ruth Stout, Mom? No. It's an amazing woman. Like she didn't call it permaculture at the time, but she was doing the mm -hmm. same thing. She's just she was just copying the way natural systems work. Yeah. Right. Uh, the stuff grows and then it falls to the ground and it decomposes into the ground and then yeah. new stuff comes up. And I mean, the, the challenge for us as gardeners is we we can't have everything just you know over overwhelmed with weeds, but there's ways to adapt and make use of the way things happen in the natural world to make it a lot easier. I, I don't know how scalable it is for uh, agriculture. Um, but well, the they home, are doing that, actually, Greg. Uh, yes. We talked to a gardener in Alberta last year, not a gardener, a farmer who says that they're, you know, drilling, um, drilling is killing. No, tilling is killing. And drilling, is, drilling is, the, yes. is the way they go now. So they have the, they inject the seeds into the, into the ground that has, is covered with the detritus from the detritus from every, you know, from yep. the previous year. And I'm doing that in my, on my lawn. I mulch the leaves because the trees you know, obviously wanted that nutrition back. You and leave the same mulched thing in my leaves garden. on the lawn? Yeah. Yeah. I just make sure they're well, you know, I mean, I, I cut them up with my lawnmower. Yeah, run over with the mower. Yeah, exactly. The same thing with the garden itself. Dad used to do that, Shauna. He would take the spring and instead of going in and cutting up all that, those stalks and all that back mm -hmm. backbreaking work, he would simply go over it with a lawnmower and then the stuff would disappear in a couple of days. It was yeah, great. That's, that's kind of the same. So that's that's the, the same, same idea. idea. And, yeah. Yeah. So and it's ideal for the home gardener because you throw all that. So every fall, I mean, this is the, the main way I, I employ permaculture. The main way I employ permaculture in my garden is that just like in a natural system, the soil is never exposed. It's always covered with something. I might move a little mulch back to get seedlings yeah. started because you, mm -hmm. you know. They, yeah, because I was going to ask you about something like as fine as carrots. How would you deal yeah. with that? So, for um, it really depends on what you're trying to grow and how well it can get up through that stuff. So some things can get up through it, like a yeah. potato can get through a foot of hay. No problem. Uh, asparagus can get through. So some things can just get up through. Other things are smothered by it, just like a lot of your, you know, the reason uh, the keeping grass everything. Seeds, yeah. yeah, like a lot of your traditional weeds really can't contend with the mulch. Some of them can, but a lot of things can't contend with the mulch. And just like some of those weeds, things like a carrot can't do it. Um, I found like uh, if you, if I put like an inch of uh, seaweed, uh, parsnips can get up through it. Yeah, I've even planted parsnip seeds in the fall and had them come up in the spring through the mulch. So some things are kind of uh, like I've got a, a entire garden full of uh, uh, Egyptian walking onions and I mulched that last fall. Those and they're, are all come, they're all finding their way up through it. But yeah, something like a carrot uh, or, you know, whatever, something really fine like that. You just move the mulch aside. You make a row about two inches wide. Yeah expose the soil you want the soil exposed anyway because it's dark it's going to attract heat to itself right mm -hmm. you just get your seeds in there and then once the plant's about six inches high it's got a reasonably um not a tender stock but a, a sort of more yeah um, you know, woody sort of then you move the mulch back and then you stop watering and weeding your garden all summer long i don't water my <laughs> garden in july i don't water it in august i don't you know it, it would take an extraordinary event like a you know 
weeks and weeks mm -hmm. and weeks and weeks of the rain. And, and even then, like if we're, let's say we've gone three weeks without rain, I'm looking at the plants. If I come out in the morning and they're back up, I don't water it. If I come out in the morning and they look like, oh God, I don't know if we can do it today, then I'll water. But that's, I don't have to do, wow. there's certain, there are years where I don't have to do that. Now, remember, I'm in Nova Scotia and we get rain here, mm -hmm. right? Do you not have trouble with the rain? Do you not get soggy soil, um, you know, cutting out the oxygen or something mm -hmm. like that under the mulch when it rains day after day after day? Not where I am. And I mean, it's a rainy place where I am. It's especially this time of year. I mean, it rains all the time. I was supposed to go away fishing last week and I had to cancel the whole thing because it rained for about <laughs> seven days in a row. Um, I thought I was almost started building an ark uh, in the backyard. <laughs> we haven't had um, rain it yet, yet, so I'm waiting. So in my backyard, I mean, so I'm, I'm two kilometers from the ocean. Uh, I'm in Nova Scotia, in a peninsula on the North Atlantic. And the majority of the soil here is clay, it's clay and rocks. My backyard, when I built this thing, it was a weed field growing out of clay and rocks. With some, really? Yeah. Um, and clay holds onto water, right? Mm -hmm. uh, now, mind you, uh, all my beds are raised a little bit. Some of them are at grade. That's not entirely true. But most, most of my beds might be two inches above grade, just that. I, I find the higher up you go, you, you start paying a price as the plants can't get to the water that's in the ground. Um, but yeah, I don't find there being any, I mean, you've got fungi and stuff like that or fungi, but that's all the stuff you want there. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I, no, the I've only got... thing that we run into is, is soil compaction. The soil gets really soggy and I mean, there's no oxygen. So then the plants will die. Ah, so that's an go. issue. When you keep everything mulched, soil compaction stops mm -hmm. being a problem. Okay. So I'm going to explain why. Yeah, so, I get it. Go ahead. When you've got bare soil. OK, every raindrop is a tiny jackhammer pounding on the ground, right? In the winter, you've got the weight of the snow bearing down on the soil. Uh, when you've got mulch on your soil, you've got a little bed mattress, springy thing, right? Uh, so the rain, the, the, the energy of the rain, when it hits the, the, uh, the, the mulch layer, it's not compacting your soil. It's just, just getting absorbed, sucked yeah. into that. It's never dry. And that's the other thing. When you don't have a mulch, you got rain compacting the soil and then sun drying it out. So, so you've basically got like a cement yeah, factory yeah, going there, right? Yeah. When you've got the mulch, it doesn't dry out or it takes a very, very, very long time for the soil to dry out. And the rain isn't hitting with the same amount of force. And because you've got a mulch, and remember, you're not tilling this every you're just leaving it alone. You've got all of these different organisms moving around in the soil, creating tunnels, creating little, you know, little... You know, there, yeah. everything, there's all these things moving around and they're making spaces and air in the soil. And you've got the plants you grew the previous year. Sometimes you pull the plants out of the ground, but sometimes you just cut them off. Mm -hmm. So they leave the roots in the ground and that's, that's leaving spaces. You know, the roots yeah. break down and decompose. So the soil gets it. I haven't tilled my garden ever. And what about loose. slugs? You get a lot of slugs and snails. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, that's an excellent question. So yeah, you're keeping everything mulched all the time. So you're creating the ideal conditions for slugs and snails. You're creating a slug and snail heaven. They got all these great places to hide from their predators, right? Because and, and there's all this decaying organic matter, which they love. Not only do they like hiding under your mulch, they like the mulch. They eat it just as much as the worms do. Um, so you do have the risk. And there's if you're planting anything that they really like, um, especially when those plants are young, they're exceptionally vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, so you, uh, like for kale, uh, every brassica in the world, every brassica there is, kale, cabbage, collard greens, you name it, right? Um, I have slugs and snails everywhere. Now, every single year I get more and more birds showing up in the spring to sort and look for them, right? But they don't do everything. So when I plant a row of kale, I put a little bit of a, uh, I use the kind of slug bait that the, the active ingredient is iron. Mm -hmm. The slug mm -hmm. eats it. It just gets overdosed with iron and it dies. Um, it doesn't eliminate slugs from the area. It's just managing. It's a barrier. It protects yeah. the plants that need protecting. Temporarily. Once the plant's about six inches high, I find they really don't uh, do any damage to them. Also, the, the slugs are, you think about a slug's mentality. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oxymoron. <laughs> It can, it can eat the foliage of the, the kale plant, mm -hmm. but it can also eat the rotting mulch, right? The mul rotting mulch is just like yard waste yeah. and stuff like that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And which carries a higher risk? 
right? Once they climb up into that kale plant, the birds are there, you know, nailing oh, them, right? Okay, that's interesting. And they're, they're averse to light. So they might attack your kale at, at night, but not during the day. So once the kale are a certain size, I, I, still, I don't use anything, right? I just leave them alone. And there's a little bit of slug damage here and there, but it's really not, I mean, it would be a problem if you were a commercial grower because everything has to look perfect, right? But there's mm -hmm. a tiny bit of uh, damage, but not a lot, especially if you keep them spaced out really well. The slugs, only the most intrepid slugs. <laughs> also, once <laughs> and they those, deserve it. <laughs> once, this, once the kale plant gets like, if using kale as an example, once it gets a certain size, the stem is tree-like. It's really yeah. hard and woody sort of thing. So a slug, remember the slug's just feeling its way along the ground it's going to go for anything it feels tender that smells right when it, when it comes across that that uh, kale stem it's it's just going to keep moving for something better because it's not what it's looking for so when you don't use good you don't waste good beer on the slugs i take it uh, on the scale i'm gardening at i couldn't i mean i'd have to have about 50 50 slug traps right i, I um, just need to point out that slugs actually prefer cheaper beer oh they do <laughs> they <laughs> yes they prefer pabs blue ribbon Oh, is that Absolute right? <laughs> yes, this was a study from years ago. Uh, and, and I think it has to do with that. It, it's based on rice, Pabst Blue Ribbon, the way they make it. And that's what slugs prefer. Well, there you well, go. I'm not feeding well, that to my slugs. The but other what thing about, about, I was going to ask you about point. the mulch. Okay, go ahead. The, one more point. <laughs> the other thing about the mulch and the slugs and the snails is that you want them there. They are turning your mulch into slug and snail poop. And that slug and snail yeah. poop is manure, and it's better than any manure you can buy. I mean, mm -hmm. it's 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 just it's equivalent to worm castings in terms of from your plant's point of view, right? So the fact that you have a large population of slugs and snails, it's 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 a problem you have to manage when your plants are young. There's a lot of plants that are slug and slug and snail proof. I I find they never okay. bother my spinach, never bother mm -hmm. my lettuce, and not in any meaningful way, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's brassicas and a handful of other things when they're really young. Mm -hmm. uh, other than that, you know, a lot of plants like a squash or something like that, when it's really tiny, it's vulnerable. But once the second and third set of leaves come out, it becomes all spiny and they don't go near it. It's well, I wish they'd leave my hostas alone. I'll have to train them to go only, only go after them when they're young or something like that. But what about the mulch? I mean, it is breaking down all the time. Do you replenish it with anything or is it just the depth, you know, the, the, the waste from the previous year? Oh, you're... Your questions are like the perfect segue to the next thing I want to, every single question you have <laughs> is the next thing I want to talk about. There we go. So, so um, every fall, I, drive, I work in the city, I have to drive into town every, every day. And uh, instead of going down like the main highways, I tend to take the side streets to get around stuff. And uh, in the fall, uh, all the people in the city bag up their leaves and their yard waste and they put it in these mm -hmm. big paper bags and leave it at the end of the driveway. So, uh -huh. um, so people in Halifax see this guy in dress clothes, competitive as a little uh, Kia Forte, and put it in his trunk. Um, sometimes they even put it in the back seat, right? Oh, so no, you're kind these... of garbage man. <laughs> exactly. What's this, guy garbage man. <laughs> this guy's lost his mind. Um, so I'll just get every trip when I see these, I have a certain routes I take, right? Oh, this, the street's really good for stuff like this, right? <laughs> uh, the streets, I even have particular people I know they like some of them they um some people rake their leaves but the best people the most uh you know the most courteous people they mow their leaves and it's all bagged and then rake them yeah oh, or so put them in got, the bag yeah it's got, it literally it's got leaves and grass in it so it's got like a carbon nitrogen mix it's like the greatest stuff right um also like large leaves when you mulch with them they tend to blow away so you want the mower tends to make it all clump together right um, so I, I gather bag after bag after bag of that all fall and every single bed as it finishes up I'll cover a four by eight bed might get one or two bags like that so at least three inches of uh, mulch over everything and I do that every fall and then uh, when the spring rolls around uh, for the most part most of that most of that mulch is still there because it really doesn't break down that, that much over the winter it's, yeah. it's you know it does a little bit of decomposing in october november mm -hmm. but it's just getting colder and colder every day everything shuts down um so i still got a, a good amount of that luckily for me around this time of year everybody gets out and starts raking what they there's <laughs> people that didn't rake their leaves in the fall like because i need about i could use about five more bags right now 
someone's going to provide that for me. It's going to happen. If it doesn't happen, I'll just mow my lawn and take my stuff off. Right. I've got a septic <laughs> field back here. I always say to the kids, uh, you know, I normally use a mulching blade on my mower, but we have a, a septic field and we live in a rural area. We have a septic field. And I never worry about the septic field having enough nitrogen. So I'll put the bag on and take the, take the grass from the septic field. The grass always grows great there. And so uh, I'll tell the kids, like, we, we mow the grass from the, our poop goes in the septic field. And then I take the grass and put it in the garden. And that makes a beat. And we're eating our own poop. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that story when you were little, Sean, and I told you when people die, the cows come and eat them. They turn into a daisy and the cows come and eat them. So there you go. <laughs> it's the same I story. <laughs> The same I, I, thing. But yeah, uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, that's that's the cycle of it. I, I I I don't generate enough on my property here for the size of garden. I've got about fifty four, the equivalent of fifty four by eight beds back there. Right yeah, I was going mind. to ask you how big your garden is. What do yeah. you do with all that produce? I eat it all. You um, do? 